Well, I'm here at low water on the Bewley River in Hampshire in the south coast of England. Uh, the West Solent is just down the river there. If you don't sail in Northern Europe, looking at this lot is probably a bit of a culture shock for you. This is uh, the tide as we know it. And believe it or not, the tide here is actually quite small. It's only about three and a half, four metres at the very, very most. Across the channel in Brittany, it gets up to 14 metres, even 15 on a really big tide. So we're used to this sort of thing here. It's meat and drink to us and uh, crawling around in the mud is sort of what I grew up with really. Now, what I want to talk about here it's not the specifics of how you calculate tide and not how the tide is dragged around the earth by the moon and all these difficult questions. I'm just going to talk about how you can actually work the tides in your local area if you're observant and you've been keeping your eyes open. This is how they used to do it before tide tables were ever invented. Now this, what I'm standing on here is actually a concrete hard, it's a scrubbing grid and this wall has got nice posts against it, against which a boat can lie without hurting herself. You'll see also that in recent years somebody's put a bit of a tide gauge up here to show us what the depth of water is. Well that's very interesting, but uh, when I used to dry out my pilot cutter here, which drew 8 feet, 8 feet, 2.4 metres, I used to float her in here on a big, big tide. She wouldn't get in here on every tide. And here's how I knew how to do it. When the tide got up to that seam there, the very top seam, I knew I could float on with a few inches under my keel. That's all I needed to know. I didn't have to read the tide tables or anything, I just had to look at that. And I'd be moored on some posts out there and I'd just keep my eyes open and watch the tide coming and coming and coming. And if it didn't get to there, I stayed on the posts because I didn't want any grief. But if it reached that mark, I'd float her in, tie her up alongside here, run a line ashore, there's all sorts of stuff on there you can tie up to, and uh, run a line ashore from my masthead I should say, and just put a little bit of heave on the throat halyard just to give her a little bit of a tip over that way. I might move my anchors and a bit of chain to the inside as well just to give her a little bit of a heel, and then we'd wait and have a cup of tea until the tide went away. And I don't know, six hours later, we'd be sitting here walking around on the hard giving her a good old scrub off, get her hose, get her nice and clean. She'd dry out with a bit of luck and get a coat of paint on, the tide would come back and there you go, absolutely free or maybe a few quid for the harbour master but uh, nothing serious. A lot nicer than hauling yourself out on a great big crane and paying through the nose. So that's the way we used to do it. But the interesting thing is how I calculated the tidal height. And here's something else. How did I know when I was going to have a big tide like that? Well, I know because I used to look at the moon, and I still do. I wake up at night sometimes in the middle of the night, I go outside and I see the moon sailing through the clouds, and it's telling me something. It's telling me a lot more than it's telling my next door neighbour who's no seaman and doesn't have anything to do with boats or the river. Round here, in the middle of the south coast of England, the big tides, what we call the spring tides, the tides, well, they happen twice a month because they happen at full moon and no moon, the dark of the moon, actually they're usually dragging by a couple of days but essentially if you look at the full moon you know it's going to be a big big tide and you know something else, you know it's going to happen at midday Greenwich mean time or universal time, that's when the really big tide will be. It'll drag on for a few days after that but essentially that's it. When there's no moon it'll be the same thing, the spring tide the big high water will be in the middle of the day. If you live down in Plymouth or down in Dartmouth, down in the West Country, for some reason which is obscure to me, it'll be big tide at six o'clock. It's six hours different. It's a very strange thing. And similarly, if you look at the moon and you see there's a half moon, then you know it's going to be what we call a neap tide. There's half the amount of water moving on a neap tide and you'll never get your boat on here, not a boat like mine. Not a chance. So you wait for this full moon, you know when it's going to be and you do it. And if you were a fisherman in the old days and you wanted to know what the tide was doing, you'd have been watching the moon and if the moon was two or three days over full, you'd know that the tide would be, well, 40 minutes most days, 40 minutes times three, that's two hours, isn't it? Be two hours after noon, so the high water would be two o'clock. Which means that out in the Solent there, the west going tide is going to start 
at one o'clock because it starts an hour before high water and it runs for six hours. All these things we know and we don't need a book to tell us. We just know because our dad's told us and because we've found out by looking at it. And you can do this wherever you live. If you watch what's happening really carefully, you'll detect a pattern and that's the way it works. Now then, of course, if you're somewhere you don't know, or if you really want to know to the nearest centimetre how much water there's going to be, well, you'll never know that because all you get is tidal predictions. But if you want to know what's really happening, you need to look at the tide tables and all the, all, all the calculations that you need to do, or maybe press a button on your chart plotter. Now, I'm going to deal with that another time, and that's going to be a whole series of videos that will be up on my website. It's free for members, so if you want to go there and have a look, that's great. All can join. But right now, I'm going to end with the wonders of nature and what you can find out with the instruments of your own eyes.